with some news. Guess what? TikTok, back in the news again. They have not done themselves any favors as they're facing a potential ban from the US with the revelation that up until last November, they were actually violating Google's rules for Android phones by tracking the Mac, that's M-A-C, addresses of devices. This is according to the Wall Street Journal. So a quick explainer of a Mac address. It's not something that's just for Macs or iOS or Android. It's a unique identifier for every device that connects to the internet, and that includes your phone. It can't be changed. It can't be reset. It will always be associated with just one device. So that's pretty specific to you. So since 2015, both Apple and Google have prohibited apps from reading Mac address on iOS and Android, and that's important because of what advertisers could in theory do. Say you want to clear your advertising history and start over with a clean slate so you're not getting the same ads over and over. You should be able to do so, but if a company has your Mac address stored, they could just link it right back up to your previous profile and you'd be at square one. So the implication is that TikTok, by storing your Mac address, could have been doing exactly that. They did stop doing this in November of 2019, they said, which coincidentally was right when a lot of the investigations started up over whether or not they were providing data to the Chinese government. Now, there's no indication that the two are connected or what exactly was done with the Mac addresses as of right now, but it's not a good look when you're facing a ban and forced sale because of concerns over how you handle data. It's all part of this ongoing saga of TikTok. Just one more, one more thing. So if you want to follow along with it as it changes by the hour, go to digitaltrends.com. Continuing on with trending news. Microsoft has made a couple of confirmations when it comes to their upcoming Xbox Series X next generation console. One of them is that it does look like they're on track to deliver it in November, possibly even November 6th. That's based on a leak of do not sell stickers that were on some of their controllers. The other though, is that the most highly anticipated exclusive game for it will not be a part of the release. Halo Infinite won't be arriving until sometime in 2021. The developer of the game, 343 Industries, said in part, we have made the difficult decision to shift our release to 2021 to ensure the team has adequate time to deliver a Halo game experience that meets our vision. They said their delay was due to development and production challenges, including the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. But this will make for an interesting launch because Halo Infinite was a huge part of their marketing scheme and it seems to be the premier game to play on their new console. So they don't have another exclusive title that's anywhere near that caliber. Uh, the cross-generational play may be enough to get people to buy it right now, but um, the biggest game isn't going to come until next year. So it kind of leads to bigger questions too, since PlayStation also is set to release their console around the same time. Um, and are they going to have any issues with theirs? There's no signs of that yet, but certainly a delay like this for Microsoft, for the Xbox Series X, that's a big delay. So we'll have to see how that affects sales, what people are going to do. Um, but again, uh, that is what the news is right now. Halo Infinite not being released until 2021. The console still on track to release in 2020. You can follow more about that at digitaltrends.com. All right. Have you ever posted something on Twitter, maybe something mildly political, and then proceeded to get a ton of replies or, well, actually messages from people you don't know, then you'll want to hear about the latest update that Twitter has rolled out. It's a reply limiting option. So if you go to your Twitter app right now, click the button to start writing a tweet, and then look at the bottom. So there's an option there now to select who can reply to you. So you can select everyone, uh, only people mentioned, or only people you follow. And if you select one of the limited roles, the reply button is going to be grayed out for anyone who is not included in your approved category. So Twitter says they hope that this will allow for people to feel safer about having conversations on the platform by limiting what they call problematic repliers, which I think we've probably all encountered problematic repliers on that platform. And the hope is that it'll, it'll lead to, like I said, more meaningful conversations. So people can still retweet and comment on what's been posted. So they can still take yours, retweet it, put their own comment on there, but that essentially takes conversation elsewhere. So if it's a bot or a spam replier or problematic replier, that would at least take it somewhere where no one else is likely to see it because a lot of times they don't have any followers anyway. So it's an interesting experiment, particularly with all the myriad issues and discussions going on currently and with the political cycle we're all now in the middle of as well. The update is available to everyone, so expect to see reply options popping up on your Twitter feed soon. Read more about it at digitaltrends.com. All right, one final thing here, and then we're going to have some great news from Microsoft coming up here. Uh, NASA has declared that their planet-hunting, transiting exoplanet survey satellite, otherwise known as TESS, has been a complete success. And they just published a video to celebrate it. So a little history on it. TESS was launched in April of 2018 aboard a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket that put it into an orbit that allowed it to use four different cameras to view far and distant solar systems. And because of that, 
It was able to survey 75% of the starry sky. It found 66 new exoplanets, including the first one of Earth's size that was in the habitable zone of its star. It observed a binary star eclipse and a star getting shredded up by a black hole, which is just cool. And that's just a tiny part of what it was able to do. So now it's entering into phase two of its mission, which will cover the other 25% of the sky. And that's where some interesting tech improvements are coming into play. So NASA scientists were able to improve the way it collects data and processes data, uh, which it means it's now able to capture a full image in 10 minutes versus 30 minutes previously. That's a pretty big improvement. It just goes to show the power of programming and what we can do to even better understand and utilize the tech hardware we already have. It's, it's pretty cool stuff. Wanted to share that. We've got more details on the site, so definitely go there if you'd like to learn more at digitaltrends.com.